Hello there, lovely soul. I'm Infinity and welcome to this video and my channel. This one is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. We're going to get into Tarot and Oracle for this reading. Of course, welcome cross watchers as well. I'm Infinity, psychic, physical empath, medical medium, shaman, mystic, astral ascension guide, ascension coach. I work with people and animals world wide my website is thehealingbutterfly.org where i offer a lot of services from uh distance energy healing uh tarot and oracle private astral meditation um psychic advice in uh different ways as well as my readings anyhow take a look at my website subscribe so you don't miss anything to the website and to youtube here check out my podcast get to know me and my miraculous story story of healing from somebody being chronically ill to being a super healer now uh it's been quite the journey anyhow capricorn i am so happy to be here with you it is the third of may sorry to get this out a little late uh but it's been really intense with energies coming into may oh there's our first card we got the fool it did flip out in reverse but we are going straight up with it we're going to get a few more cards here. That one. This one. And this one. This one. And this one. Okay. Awesome. What do we have here at the bottom? Nice. I like it. Let me share with you what we got. We have the fool in, uh, well, it flew out in reverse, but I heard to go straight up with it. Three of swords uh, in reverse. We'll see if it stays that way. Uh, three of cups straight up. The emperor in reverse. The eight of swords in reverse. And lastly, the sun. So let me take a look here. Let me just check in. <sighs> okay. So what I'm seeing here. So we're staying in reverse for that three of swords we're staying in reverse for the emperor we're staying in reverse for the eight of swords we're not moving those around uh okay so capricorn we're starting off in a some this may energy is really pushing forth a lot of changes for everybody this is the first month of the year where like the ball really starts moving not that there hasn't been big aha moments and revelations and healing and and all sorts of stuff in the first four months but it's more like setting things up to get things really going in the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve months coming up. Um, so May is always that month. And in this month, we have the new moon on the 11th. We have it's a lot of 11 a pillar of creation activations within the Stargate between the 5th and the 15th. If you're unfamiliar with Stargates, check out my video on Stargates. Uh, and that will give you more information on our 10 day Stargates or 11 day Stargates, technically, because we have our landing day or our 11th day. But our 10 day Stargates every Every single month and they always start on that double digit so one one two two three three four four five five the more famous stargates are eight eight for the lion's gate and eleven eleven those are the two that like people really pay attention to but every single month we have stargates and they do last that long so please get into that if you don't already understand it or know about it most people don't so um so please check that out but anyhow this month we have a lot of this newness energy this turning over of energy and what i see here with you capricorn is that you're ready for that you're definitely like yeah bring it on let's have new i really want that in my life and 
I'm ready to, to work on that and to kind of um, be less afraid, be more faithful. Uh, I feel like here with this three of swords um, that there has been past experiences that have um, not been great outcomes in connections with others in uh, relationships and there's a lot of different reasons for that and there's still some connections to that but you have been kind of working on pulling that apart for yourself cutting cords healing um seeking information but there's still work to do there there's like shadowy stuff there that still is unknown not seen by you it's just like there's black dark spots there that that are just there it's like things rise to the surface at the time that they're ready to rise and it feels like you've been seeing things rising and and working on dealing with those things but i think you know and and the proof is in the pudding of how things are kind of playing out for you that there's still stuff that needs to be done um but at the same time you are also you have the three of cups right next to it straight up so you see how this is very interesting you have that three of swords in reverse right next to it three of cups so but if it if you were all over this if this was all done this wouldn't even be here so you're not all done with it you have done some work but before this can be completely eliminated from the picture capricorn you need to um and i highly suggest i'm getting reminded here i suggest you checking out the full moon it's my full moon to new moon readings um the last one and then even the the prior like new moon or the or the april uh reads too for you capricorn they're like pointing me to all of these to really help you and i have a playlist for all of the signs so find your capricorn playlist and check it out um i'm not usually guided to to say that sort of thing so there's something there for you that you either missed you didn't you maybe you haven't maybe you're new to my channel but go ahead and, and watch those um I feel like with this three of cups kind of mostly this is talking about your your guardian angel connections your being guided by your divine p counterparts um on the other side of the veil here and you're leaning into that more which is really good but it's a, it's very like pick and choose kind of thing it feels like because the emperor is in reverse right after that three of cups and the emperor is uh definitely in this scenario here uh wanting to bring in that higher level um connection like archangels ascended masters that sort of thing to balance out the divine feminine and the divine masculine i feel like that is still a, a thing that needs to to happen for you um i i'm getting this like there's things that are forgotten that need to be remembered uh so it's just a level to get to like we need to go deeper is what i'm seeing here because really similar to this what's really interesting are these two cards in there to me anyway in the way that the energy the three of swords and the eight of swords are pretty similar here um and they're both in reverse and i really like the eight of swords in reverse to be honest with you that is my preferred way to see the eight of swords because it does say that you're coming out of this like unable to see like really caught up in in the past and illusion and pain and blame and not being able to 
like kind of move past stuff, not being able to see your role in the situations, that sort of thing. So this is in reverse. Um, and then your next card here is the sun. So we definitely have like, like we have, we're, we start off with these two end cards here, the sun and the fool. So the sun is the 19th card in the major arcana. The fool is the zero card, the very first card in the major arcana, new beginnings. And the sun is like high level, um, uh, like energy coming in and uh connections with with soul with your actual soul so i feel like in may we are going to have the opportunity the time the energy the the incoming activations for you to be able to finally see like i said like what is hidden like there's still things in the shadow and throughout the month of May, it, things are going to come be less in shadow and more obvious about things, I feel, to help you out. Okay, let's get into the archetype cards. Um, and we start with the selves. It's the inner quest reading for these archetype cards by Kim Kranz. And I really love this reading because we get one of each card, the selves, the places, the tools, and the initiations or the theme of what's going on. So it's like the story of your life via the archetypes of what's going on for you um, for the month of May. So we'll start off here first with the, oh, there we go, the self. And we've got the healer. Then we'll do the, uh, the places. Just want to make sure I grab the right pile here. The places. Okay, there it is. The place is the bardo. Then we have the tool. So the the tool is um, what we need to use or what we need to stop using or we need to pay attention, what's going to help us figure things out or see things more clearly, all that kind of stuff. Oh, there it is. Oh, we got the gem for the tool. Dig it. Okay. And then for the initiations or the theme. Like, what is the energy, overall energy that we need to think about here? What is, what is the universe? Gaia. What are we being guided to? This one here. Anima Mundi. Okay. So first we start with the healer card. This is the self card that came out for you at this time, Capricorn. Uh, the healer. So let's go there and I'll show you the other cards real quick. That is the bardo. That is your place. Then we have the tool is the gem. And then we have anima mundi for your initiation. So healer. 111 what do you know page 111 is the healer the light worker the gifted the old soul though some claim the work of the healer as their gift and name it as their dharma the force of this archetype is within everyone it is our natural inclination to remember to return to and to reclaim that central and eternal life force from which we so easily drift away in Sanskrit, the word av avida means forgetting. And it is said that this is the source of all suffering and disease. The healer's mission when 
sorry, then it becomes to move through the comfort of forgetting, through the veils of ignorance and denial, to reveal the radiance that already exists. The healer approaches this in multiple ways, from multiple angles, knowing the cycle of healing is not linear. It is multi-layered and circuitous process leading back always leading back to its own origin much like the orobos and the orobos is the the snake eating its own tail i have that ring right here uh, turn it and see the snakes you know i have um i love abalone's actually i have two abalone rings with my with my uh butterfly that's what it's called <laughs> um so the healer with the aura so much like the orobo so it's like it's it's circular healing it is it's never done we're never finished um and me being a healer i can definitely um speak to this the light work of the gift of the old soul um it is about learning to heal yourself and others is about remembering is about connecting spiritually is about connecting back to your soul your soul essence your um other lifetimes who and what you are on a soul base level um how this dimension works how our body works how energy works it is all energy when it comes to healing that is number one to understand as a healer is that any Thing wrong in the body has to do with energy in some way that is out of alignment from that that neutral or high vibrational force of like somebody that isn't in pain that isn't with disease that sort of thing but anyway um I think this is we're really kind of coming into an understanding that your energy whether you and whether you're intentional about it or not but your energy helps others it makes people feel good it makes people feel better so um if you're a light worker you're an empath if you're a healer you're an empath it's just how it works and um i have an empath series started that i started last week so please check that out on my youtube i also have an ebook the essential empath guide take the quiz also that first video is the quiz that i go through one by one and offer more clarity in the video so i suggest that you check that out i'm being guided to tell you um so it feels like here like you're coming into a place of understanding and acceptance that you're a, you're diff, you're built differently and you're able with your abilities to help others but at the same time you also have a a glitchy and sticky past with people and it's you're still healing that so so it's like to be able to really come into like healer status we need to we need to patch over and heal ourselves first um and so you're you're working on understanding all of this okay let's go to the bardo 163 there's the bardo okay the liminal the in between the transition it is said that the bardo is a place between this life and the next a liminal realm through which souls pass envisioning this inherently mysterious space creates the potential for us to rise above the concerns of this world and see our relationships through a cosmic and timeless lens we may receive messages from those who are no longer with us or see visions of lives not yet lived in the bardo there is potential to forgive the unforgivable to say the unsaid to see the unseen and love the unloved to let go of all the things that cause us pain the bardo suspends us in this spaciousness for just long enough to open us to a higher wisdom its energy does not belong to earth as we know it but rather to the cosmic network of which we are we are a single thread and when light spaciousness grace forgiveness truth and when dark torment desolation hallucination and transience 
So yeah, we just got done talking about if you're the healer, we need to heal. We need to see what we haven't seen before. Um, we need to, you know, love the unloved, heal the unhealed, you know, all this, see the unseen. That's what a healer feel. It's like, that's what a healer does. We, we have to be able to, to see people that, that were, that we're associated with in our in it from that capacity and life itself from a totally different landscape and view than than where we would normally be and um we need to take ourselves there so this also comes with you know deep introspection clearing energy the light and the dark and allowing for those shadowy things to come up and see like i said in the beginning there's things that you have not seen yet and the bardo is really pointing that out okay let's get to the gem One seventy seven. There is the gem. Okay, the diamond, the gold, the inner treasure. There are infinite names for the gem. It is also known as the jewel, the star, the talent, the gift, the gold. One thing for certain is that it is found deep within a substance that is very much unlike it. For example, a diamond in the rough. The gem always stands in contrast to contrast to its surroundings. You can't find it when you are among comforts and pleasantries. Space, sorry, precious stones develop slowly deep in the earth amid pressure and darkness. Discovering the gem requires a descent beneath the surface where there is no definitive map. Yet the longing to touch the true gem within us is so strong that we cannot help but seek out its radiance. Your gem, like your destiny, is unlike any other in the entire world. Keep digging. So when light... Unique, shining, generative, irreplaceable, and when dark, envy, greed, and grasping. So yeah, this is more of what is what is there, that gem um, for you to discover. And as the healer, like what is what are those gifts as as the healer? What what is your thing? Um, and it's more discovery, more digging, digging deep. This is about, um, this reading really is about connecting to other worlds, connecting deeply to Gaia and working with her, um, and going to that other world, the Bardo, that in-between space. Um, and both of these things come with that like deep meditative introspection, that like wanting and longing to get into a space with and for yourself that is unlike any other space and nobody can take you there except for yourself on a certain level because you have to decide like even if you work with somebody like me like a shaman a healer I take you in astral to work with Gaia to work with um, masters and archangels to heal you on so many levels to infuse you with light and all these things that are so awesome and amazing miraculous but you have to bring yourself to the doorway to even have that stuff happen. So, um, and healers need healers. Like I've known, I'm I I'm known as like the healer's healer. Like this is where um, you come to really really get deep for healers to really like get into stuff and bring out all the the jewels, the gems, the the gold that is within you that is meant to be brought in the world for others to um to benefit from as well and we all have that you know a, i haven't met a healer a natural healer and this is who i'm talking to here natural born healers on some in some level and and what it said there in in the card like everybody is like has this capacity it's just that we don't we we forget those things some have like we've done it over and over again in our incarnations. So when it gets to remembering and tapping into all of that stuff, we can really like 
you know, light the fuse to the past and bring all that stuff, you know, through the through the in between space and help us remember. That's basically how it started for me. It was like, it was like my guides telling me you've always been a healer, a shaman, a medicine woman in some facet in in your in your incarnation. That is what you've been. I had no idea and if anything as a medical medium and psychic physical empath I was really sick physically for 40 plus for 40 years before I had any idea about that I didn't realize that my body was naturally healing without my intent was absorbing energy from others to clear them without me knowing it and sticking in me and all this good stuff so um (laughs) that doesn't exist anymore thank goodness because I know I remember I've dug into places and figured this stuff out but anyhow Capricorn this is being you're being told that you know first off there's work to do you're starting off new go as guided know that there's still stuff to clear up from your from your past there's still cords to cut there's still forgiveness to to have there's still um realizations for yourself for your own perspective on things for your own um energy into things good positive positive new positive negative neutral however you want to see that or put that um but the gem here is also saying that there's just there's so much um of this high high level connection um with with Gaia I'm hearing here with this gem um and literally crystals uh being a thing that needs to be in your life so if you're not already drawn to crystals please consider um working with crystals with amethyst with clear crystal quartz with anything that you're drawn to because that will help you um, with those frequencies and the energies in your environment or on your body uh, help you to connect with Gaia to start like lifting the layers of forgetfulness and remembering what it is that you need to remember and you just need and I'm getting focused here on this emperor card that always comes through to me as some kind of especially in this deck like a michael a merlin a uh uh any any type of like higher level ascended master archangel honestly but they're saying here that's like it's in reverse they're in reverse because you're not yet fully open to all their incoming information there's still stuff stuck in between but you are getting closer with your own personal guardian angel which is the actually you know the first a great first step there because they work in conjunction with archangels and ascended masters on your behalf to help guide you so you're definitely like on that path okay let's go to anima mundi the very last card in the deck anima mundi and get into that okay the soul of the world all that is anima mundi epitomizes the principle accept all reject none simply put it is the living soul of the world and all its multifaceted multifaceted multi-dimensional layers bonded together by loving cosmic forces diversity is celebrated multiplicity is honored and nothing is denied embrace constructs of separation uh dissipate wait sorry and nothing is denied what huh Diversity is celebrated, multiplicity is denied, and nothing is denied. Embrace. Okay, that makes no sense. Whatever. Constructs of separation dissipate into the the wonderful mess of shared consciousness. Anima Mundi is the link between the literal and the imaginal, the rational and the mythic. It is the connective fiber that makes life meaningful. This card indicates an initiation on the level of the soul. You will awaken the unique light within and witness how this light celebrates 
sorry, how this light contributes to the radiance of the entire universe, you will sense yourself as a critical note in the cosmic orchestra. Destiny is altered as you hear the enchanted melody of all living things. And when light, tending to the sacred details of life, and when dark, overwhelmed by the bigness of existence. That can be overwhelming. <laughs> um, so, Anima Mundi. So, this is all very, this is connect to soul. Connect to your, you know, to, connecting to your soul connects you to the universe connects you to that all-knowing inner inner space that is very freeing and takes you out of like this human aspect this personality this identity and takes you to another level of existence of understanding your place in this incarnation and this reading here the healer the bardo the gem anima mundi along with these other cards here are definite with the starting off with the fool i love the fool and the healer together because as the healer we're constantly starting over starting over starting over because we are always working on our deeper connections and it's just it are getting rising higher into the upper world understanding the underworld um going you know it's like an elevator up and down up and down and especially as we if we are like those who are actual healers shaman people like this that work with other people we're always getting different energies in to show us a different look at everything around us and and within us so uh definitely intense energies for you capricorn in the month of may i'm also feeling like Like this last thing here is again the cord cutting, but it's about um literally separating yourself from the things that are that pull you energetically, that really pull on your time, energy, and and um, light that is not in balance so people jobs even your geography like do you live someplace really chaotic do you have roommates that are really low vibe do you spend time with either friends or family that are just you know chaotic messes or is there too much of that do you need to pull back do you need to spend more time on you and getting deep like this because you can't get into this deep stuff if it's if a lot of time is spent go with other people and going outward so if you have limited time due to your lifestyle and let's not forget you're in charge of your time your energy and what you do in your life you know hopefully <laughs> most people even if you feel very constricted and very like um uh responsible for people and this and that the truth of the matter is is that we are in charge of that we impose on ourselves what we why did my music stop How odd. I'm not sure. That was really weird. Like it paused. <laughs> what time is it? 144. Interesting time to pause. Okie dokie. Um, it literally just paused by itself. Okay. So if so, this message here is like, there's still enough that's attached to you that's, that's like, it's like right after this full card it's like new beginnings like but we've got already this like energy that's that's like you are falling into the cosmic web to um of creation to figure out your place and who you are on a soul-based level what is this incarnation about because you definitely have gifts and talents and abilities that are of the healer mythic type variety whether you're a psychic a medium a channel you do all of it you're a healer whatever 
Um, you're definitely being pushed in that in that in that realm. And but again, to do that on a level that really what your soul requires you to do means that you have to do and spend a lot of time with and for and on yourself or else it'll, it'll always feel very fractured even if you're giving 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 to others and and you know working overtime and and spending time with all your friends and family and get, it's still that's not what this is about this is about you finding your path as somebody who's meant to um understand their their soul and and who they are like really as one that is a light worker a healer a, a helper to others to gaia and everybody has their own way of that um or ways of going about that i should say because we're healers in multiple ways for sure um okay we're gonna get into the hidden worlds oracle here. That's what I'm hearing, because it feels like stuff is hidden. And we wanna bring it out in the hidden worlds oracle uh, is perfect for this, my dear Cappy. Um, and I'm also hearing you need to spend more. It, Luckily, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting warmer, brighter, sunnier. Uh, you need to spend time in the sun. Light codes coming in. Mark your calendar for, for days like the 5th, the 7th. Sorry, the 5th, the 8th, the 11th. Um, the 18th, the 26th for days to specifically get sun um even though you should be getting it every day um those days please please make it a note to get sun on those days because those days are bringing in very specific light code energies for us and to partake of that and any of the guided astral meditations i'll be putting out um for us for the new moon full moon stargate blah 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 as i'm guided all righty here okay sacred journey introversion seeker self-knowledge there you go sacred journey oh my goodness what card 30 love it another three got lots of threes here three threes all right we got card number 30 we got the three of swords the three of cups any more threes that's a lot of threes and threes three is that heart that love the ascended masters you're being um because they're pointing that to me now and even earlier when i when it was the three of swords upside down they're like this is also just a, also about the threes the three numbers so please look up three 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 for yourself um and uh i suggest joanne sacred scribe site for everything angel numbers but there's a lot of great information out there okay but essentially threes are ascended masters and if you connect to those like G uh, jesus buddha krishna any any ascended master type person all righty <sighs> sacred journey introversion seek seeker self-knowledge one more time take a look at that how beautiful that is there's a path okay you have walked alone for some time now you have turned inward to that great path that lies inside of us all and have taken its many tributaries into the soul of your own self you have discovered the things so many hide from themselves and you have brought them to the surface examined them and found their beauty and their sorrows and after knowing them integrated them have gone deeper still within that silent silent place at the heart of where of sorry at the heart of you there is another temple the temple of your soul where your precious most secret heart has laid and waiting for you a sleeping beauty a wise wizard at the gate of your truth 
and you have kissed your soul and accepted the truth of yourself with this comes a reawakening to return to the world now your stillness and repose which all the world has seen but not understood will begin to express the wisdom it found at the heart of you too many journey outwards expecting to find the answers outside in gurus and teachers and places and other people in medicines and therapies and all have their part to play but if we do not seek the chalice within we cannot drink from the cup of our soul the crystalline waters of the self and this friend you have done the journey you have taken within has been challenging and full of risk but you have made it to the center of you and now that you know what treasure lies within you can rise again and re-enter the world and and know fully who you are and why you are here illumination my time of deep quiet leads to personal breakthroughs so like i just got done saying in order to get the answers for yourself you cannot be with and around people and outputting during this time of discovery this is saying this is for you this is what is going to happen you're on this journey you have started this you're like this is saying like you're you're doing this now this is the time where either whatever's come before this whatever healings you've done whatever spiritual connections whatever um um guidance you've had up to now has all and whatever work that you've done on yourself whatever energy clearing whatever tarot readings whatever you know whatever videos books articles podcasts that you've watched has all been chipping away at you know at this cavern for you to dig deep into get to remember we got the gem we got the bardo we got the i mean there's so much here there's the fool the bardo the he all of this stuff is saying there is a new you life coming that is like the who you are meant to be is going to blossom and bloom but your energy with the sun and the water the light and the time the sleep the meditation the self-care that you put that you that what is incoming for you and how to be with yourself and where what to invest your time energy effort and money into um is going to be about you it, it um coming into the 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 destiny of who you are a lot of this energy in may across the board is about getting closer to destiny whether it's connecting with soul family and having these like big connections and this like this or it's about solitude and going deep it's like really interesting i just did the sagittarius reading and it was like very different from this um and it's just really interesting how that how that is but anyway it's time for you to give to yourself so you can go through this um, see those dark spots and, and shine a light on them and bring them to the surface like it said here and like I said earlier there are things have been coming to the surface and you've been taking care of them but more is going to come and um, this is really time for you to change your life your lifestyle whether it's your work where you live the people in your life how much you're outputting to balance this out because it's really necessary to give to you at this time and the, for the rest of for the rev forever actually but um this is where it's your decision these are your decisions to make to you know like i said your life your lifestyle how you spend your time and energy is a hundred percent your decision and i think that there's portions of of time and energy in your life where you feel aren't yours but that's an illusion. They are yours. And you just have to redesign it in a way that's going to work for you. Okay, Capricorn. Thank you so much for being here. This is an awesome read. Again, if I can be of assistance, check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. I've got those awesome meditations and my ebooks. I highly suggest you check them out. All right. Bye for now.